Welcome to the Arrow Show once again on NDD TV. Today I have a very fine gentleman all the way from Canada. His name is Mr. Felix Ayunzu, a martial arts trainer and a black belt holder. He's going to talk to us about his father and his involvement with the coup of 1972 and thereafter. Welcome, Felix. Thank you very much for having me. Felix, um, could, could you tell us who your father was? My father was the late Major Kwesi Ayinsu, enlisted, recruited in the Ghana Armed Forces on February 20th, 1953, and rose to the rank of Major, was commissioned as an officer in November of 1960 as a second lieutenant, and then he rose through the ranks to become a major and retired from the army on the 21st of March 1974. Dad was in the army for 21 years. He was also involved, he had many military appointments, but he was a mechanical transport officer. He's worked with Major Sharp. He's worked with Kanalawa, Kanal Sunny Thomas. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit of a bar that's in the end. Right. That, that, that's fantastic. So I, I believe um, he was well in the military before Nkrumah was elected um, to lead the country. Um, what, what, yes. what was, um, and I believe you were, you were then probably young. But did you witness anything at the time? Or? Well, I, was, I, was, I was born in 64. Dad was in the army. Oh, okay. So you were in the... But what did he tell uh, you? Uh, I'm very close with my dad, so I know a, uh, I know a good thing. What, what, what did he tell you? What did he tell you about uh, the Nkrumah's uh, administration or the Nkrumah era? What, what was the situation? People believe that Nkrumah was a dictator and did not do anything for Ghana. Well, what's your, what, what did he really say about Nkrumah's administration to you? My, my dad said Nkrumah was a very fine gentleman. He listened to many of the speeches. Uh, when he was with the UGCC, he broke away to become, uh, to form the Convention People's Party. And uh, I remember that on the 6th of March 1957, on Independence Day, my dad said he was a sergeant. In the army, and then the Nkrumah was very fine and very hot, and he liked the Nkrumah style. Uh, I, apparently, one of his best friends, Kenals, the late Colonel C.R. Pickman, was one of Prime Nkrumah's AD camp, AD camp. And then uh, Captain Sam Bachman, who saved Nkrumah at Rose Walloo, who was a Dungu, that he took me to Sam Bachman's house before. So he said a little bit about, uh, he said a little bit about it. But at the time, we were living at military. Uh, we were living one time at the Ghana Military Academy. We moved to Accra, I think 1964. Stayed there at Laba City City before the coup, and, we, and then he was transferred back to Ghana Military Academy. So briefly, he told me a little bit about Nkrumah, but not that. But I know the, his colleagues in the army in the 60s after the coup, uh, after the 66 coup, and after the 72 coup, of course, I lived in Ghana, the Buffalo. All so, right. you know, I championed the military coming over. So all right. I know it, so all right. Now, I understand your father was a, a very close friend to General Kutu Achampon, but we'll get to the 1972 coup. What I want to verify uh, from yourself is who actually led the overthrow of Nkrumah. Was it a free fire? Or was it Kutuka? It was Kutuka. It was uh, Kutuka because um, uh, I think uh, I believe it was Kutuka. And then he assembled, uh, Kutuka assembled Africa. One of them was in Kumasi. I don't know if it was in Kumasi. The other I think was Kutuka by myself. Uh, it was Kutuka. Africa was just. Uh, he was a he was a strong man, young man. But it wasn't it was led by General Kutuka. So Africa was was uh, was a, a friend of Kutuka. 
So it came about like that. It was Kodoka and uh, oh, it was Kodoka. He was the architect of the coup. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I understandably, I mean, Kotoka um, passed on. I mean, and, uh, you know, Afriva, you know, did what he, has, he had to do. Um, Buzia took over the country. What happened? Why did your father get involved in that coup to oversee the Buzia administration with uh, General uh, Kutu, uh, Echampon? The depth of the reason why they didn't throw Buzia was not the greatest knowledge from the guy. What I had, uh, what I had was a little bit of incompetence. And uh, the soldiers felt the country was going a long way. At the time, the general champion was the commanding officer for one brigade by Teshin. My dad has been on this front for a long time, he was a front supporter. So I, I, I remember. 72 hours after the coup was in my house. Um, the reason itself, the core reason, I don't know, I'll have a look at the core reason. Only the only thing I had was um, incompetence. Incompetence? Oh. I mean, incompetence. I'm uh, but everybody believed Buzia's administration is what uh, the now MPP is depicting. I mean, you believe the country wasn't. In, in the in the in the good uh, in the good um, sort of line of uh, regaining our. No, it wasn't I. No, it wasn't not I believe in. I mean, 1972. Right. I was an eight year old. It wasn't I believe what what the military and uh, 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 that's the what happened. And from 1972 to now, it's almost 48 years. Okay. So you know. Uh, I don't believe it's 48 years that NPP is doing. It's just uh, maybe they, they're governing in a modern way. In a modern way is 48 years ago, governing is totally different from governing now. Was the 1972 coup bloody? Was it? Was it? No, it wasn't a blood. There was not even one blood. No, absolutely no blood at all. I think it was the smoothest coup. Uh, I was murdered in 1966 too. 1966 too, a few people died. Uh, Captain Adabo, one of them. A few people died, Kutuka himself died, uh, died in the 66 too, and a few others. But the 72 crew, there was no one single death. The 72 crew. What was the relationship after with uh, your father and uh, Kufu after the takeover? What, were, how, what was the plan from there? What, what were they thinking? Uh, what, my father knows Akufu very well. They went to Egypt on a military tour in 1963. Um, it was cordial, not political. That is not very political. Just those days he got himself involved in cool because he's, he and Anakam were very good friends and I believe they believe in the same philosophy. But after that, he's never, he wasn't political or happened to be political. After he retired from the administration, after he was I'm sure they stayed friends even after he retired. Of and course, yeah, they stayed friends. They stayed friends. And Achampo yes. was still uh, in power and they stayed friends. What was Achampo's yes. relationship with the FRIFA um, at the time and your father? Um, I, you know, I didn't, you see, FRIFA was in the 60s. 60s, I was there, I would just say Totma. So I didn't see the relationship between a company and people. But I know they're friends. Because in the, after, during, after the 66 coup, a champion was the regional commissioner for the Western region. And I had seen a proof of visiting the Western region and a picture of some video tapes with both by Campo. So obviously, they know each other. But a champion is a more senior officer than a Champo in the Andes, I believe, he aged 77. A few, I believe, he aged 136. So, right. um, well, obviously, that's good to each other. But I didn't know their relationship. Okay. Well, I do uh, know the relationship with my father and general Champo. Okay. I learned well that uh, 
a, a coup, a free fire had informed and advised a champion about Rollins. Um, did your father tell you anything about that uh, information? Especially what to do with no. him and to be careful with him? No, no. I don't know. My father, he wouldn't tell me those big secrets. I know a few things, but uh, not to that extent. I believe it was um, they're talking about uh, the advice about the FUFA. Or, I don't think a FUFA, you know, it was a FUFA who said they should be careful with the world. What, what exactly do you know about, I'm sure you know something, but it's some, I'm sure you know something, but it's very difficult for you to come up with things. Well, no, 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 I do know lots of things. I do know lots of things about some appointments. Yes, Ashla Sihar was appointed, and versus Bruce Lee and stuff. My dad, this is a friend of our company, access advice from my dad. That I know some little role things there in the yeah, Champion government era. But as of uh, military takes over SMC2, yes, I know a little bit even there. Uh, the coup of uh, the air ship of 79, I know a little bit in there. Okay. Some of the. Uh, All right. Yeah, I know a little bit in there. That's fine. That's fine. But on a given day when the, uh, the over, a champion was. Uh, you know, a champion's government was taking over. I mean, uh, there was a palace coup, uh, a very swift one. Um, but all of a sudden, uh, there was a mayhem of a cleanup exercise, and Rollins had taken over from the Akufu's administration. What was happening there? Like, what, what did your father say to you? Or you probably at the time was young, but what did you witness? Yeah, no, I know, I remember very well. Like, I was at the Ghana Secondary School in Takradi. I was there for one and two, then transferred back to Sava I was, we went out, myself and one guy, one gentleman, who's now a bishop called Edmond Akemis. His father was the late Kenola Akemis. And we just went to town. He saw the newspaper. And actually, uh, Edmond says, Look down there, it's your father's name. Goes, I used you to report at the Gonda Okay. My friend is a very strong supporter of the campus. All right. And he's that very, very close. So, you know, I knew all the army officers. I even knew their houses where they left. Because we lived in Bama County together. So I thought, well, my father, since my father's been close, very close to our chapel, I mean, they're going to get him and ask some questions. But obviously, one thing I should know that <laughs> my father had one car just before the coup, and he still had it after the coup. Many, many years later, and the partition went. On that merit, I knew my father could say, but military, you never know. Uh, you never know. I know so many, many fine officers. I grew up looking up to them, and they never came back. Wow. So that was very tragic. I know Kote very well. I know Juduka very, very well. They like my parents. So I go to the house and play. I know, I know them very, very well. I know I made of it, made of it very well. For number forty nine to Bavelas. So Dad went to Ghana Barracks anyway, and then they told him to go home. Same day, that was the end. On the day that the cleanup exercise took place, where were you on that very given day? I was at the GSC, and then I was there with Edmond Achiemini. He was a very good friend of mine. He's a bishop in the UK. Okay. Was the country crying for blood to flow? Did they, I mean, was there demonstration and protest for the execution yes. of these generals and head of state? Yes, yes, they were, they were, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. I mean, on that... Obviously, <laughs> obviously yes. On that given day, I mean, what, I mean, your father's very close ally, was executed. What did he say to you then about about that particular cleanup exercise? Was it worth it? I was in school. I, I was in school. And then uh, when I jumped to Rosie, because we know them very well, I come from comes from my house. I know all of them. All the officers that were executed. The one I do know very well was Afufa. 
because he had retired from the army in the 60s. So that was sad. I mean, it doesn't matter whether we, whatever, uh, if you know somebody well, some people will be your friends very well, your daddy, my father, and you, and you play with your children, all of them, I knew their children. Of course, you decide, you know. So it was a very painful moment for me because I know them. And for my dad, because he has friends, you know, that I play with their, their children. You know, I see some of their children now when I come to Ghana. I see Nikwe Kote, Emmanuel Kote, was my best friend growing up. So, it was sad. Of course, yes, you know, when you lose a parent, you lose a close friend, regardless of anything, it's sad. When they were excavated in the year 2000, I went to the funeral ceremony in 1937. Met Tony Hack Champlain and all the old, all the oldest soldiers when I was in South this time they all come we've all passed away so yes it was a sad moment for all of us even so today have they learned to forgive you are very close to some of the children of those uh, who were executed how are they surviving the whole thing have they learned to forgive or how are they moving um, on? you know they've grown to be you see Tony Ninfo Tony Ninfo's mom and dad Shot there, 1979. They were very young. And Tony used to drive his chopper bike to my house. And Nick Wikote, I met him. In fact, Peter Agbeko organized something for us about seven, eight years ago. We were all there. George Kofu, the Tech Minister, and Jack Cables, and um, Tony Achampo was there. I mean, if you see Tony now, he's grown to be a very fine young man, a handsome, fine young man, responsible man. And they've been well brought up. That's had them. I don't see them with any animosity or any anger. Anytime you see them, they look peaceful, they look content. But I know deep inside them, it's a journey. You know, because their father just, their parents just spent only half of their life. We are older than those, them now. Tony Achampo is older than his dad. When his dad went. And Dekwe Kote is older than his dad when his dad went. Way, way older than their dads. And, uh, you know, that, that pain is still there. Right? It is there. It's not the way the pain is there, but they've been brought up, we've been brought up properly. They've grown to be fine young men and very responsible in the community. They're not being revengeful at all. Mm -hmm. See, so they are photocopies of their dads. Their dads are involved people, not respectful. People okay. are not aggressive people. All right. Then we saw the other way. That's fine. Well, we will take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be talking more about the murder of the three judges and the former mayor. Thank you. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associates was established. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law, adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation and so on up to date has been broken and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law, and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law, locally in London and across the borders in Ghana, where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203. One three zero zero seven five one. So today I'm on a plot of land, not just a plot, a 40 acre plot of land around Oyibi or Sasabi. It's between Ubuntu Haven and Apollonia City of Light. This particular property has a good road, there's water, there's light. People have already bought this and they are putting up their structures. If you can see, so just call the numbers and get yours. Be your own landlord. Okay, so we just passed um, Car Junction. We're still going around the plot. As you can see to my left, that is Ubuntu Heaven. Some have already gotten their plots and then 
have their buildings on going there's light there's water as well you wouldn't have problem with the land mitigation and land guards and all that as you can see there are no land guards around there's a good place to invest if you need a plot of land or you can even buy two three four and put up some businesses Andy's natural mineral water comes with a natural thirst quenching relief. No wonder it leaves you yearning for more and more. Andy's natural mineral water, no one's papa. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. Felix, uh, I understand the cleanup exercise took place. Your friends, your father, You've all gone through the most uh, uh, darkest times of your lives. The murder of the judges, what do you know about it? Not too much. Um, one of the judges was my schoolmate, Tara Sarkodi. Banahene. You know, my schoolmate was Banahene. He's. Uh, his parent was dead. I don't know too much about that because that was in the, that was after the seventy school. So I don't know too much about that. It was what I know about him was probably to do with my temperance stuff because my dad was really close to talk to him I was here. But um the judges well, I you know I don't know much into the Did your father talk to you a, a little bit about it at all, or nothing at all? Uh, no, he said, no, no, no. Yes, my dad said, oh, look, this has been, this, been this, uh, it's been a bad night. This thing that has happened. This is very, very bad. Something has gone wrong. This is not normal. And then um, the big guy, the guy is very positive. The government, the head of government, know about it. Because those judges cannot just just die. <laughs> you know, they cannot just die. They just die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it has to be, it has to be something. They just can't die. So, you know, common sense is they have been a foul play. But the details of that foul play, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Now, um, having, uh, having lived uh, the, the era of cleanup exercise and all that, the various coups, you've, you've survived so many coups, haven't you? Um, was it worth it? You see, you know, history is a regular passing thing. We learn, we progress. You see, I don't believe in violence. I mean, was it worth it? No. Why were the generals killed? For what? Nobody can answer that today. <laughs> Why was Afufa killed? Nobody can answer that today. Listen, I'm a Barnes boy. I'm a very confident person. I'm a martial artist, grandmaster, and short term. And say Afufa was being a provocative. Tell me, now why he was killed? Was he just a provocative person? So who can answer really why they were killed? I don't know. Oh, um, I don't know. Some of them have said at the top one of the top on the chains have said they were naive at that time. You can't be naive and kill a human being. I mean, I mean everybody can take a gun, shoot people right now, tell them and say they're naive. 30, 40 years later say they were naive. It's probably not an excuse. Over in the West, if you kill somebody and it's 50 years old, you get people to try you. So 
Is it worth it? No. Why would they kill? What did it happen? So, you know, when well, we grown up there now, is it worth it? No. Not at all, in my opinion. Right. What uh, informed because, you? You know what? They were the very fine army officers. Okay. Who have been so well trained that they could give some advice to the African German people as consultants. All right. And we wasted their talent. Sure. All right. Now, you are a martial arts instructor. Um, what made you get into martial arts? I mean, was it that first you wanted all, to defend yourself? Yeah, first, of all, I've been in the okay. first of all, I've been in the martial arts for 45 years. And that's a long time. The longer than I was a black dog before the chairman of Joint Chief of Staff of the United States Armed Forces in Montana. Um, uh, I was a young, serious uh, boy, full of energy. And then um, I got into martial arts in 1974. Um, then uh, carry on to 76. Then officially, when the Ghana Taekwondo Association was formed in 1978, I came to train at the Kotuka Gymnasium in the Vamakam Congo Joint. Because, yes, I was born and bred in the barracks. My dad was born and I was um, in the barracks. So I've been in the martial arts for the longest time. In fact, when I was in high school, I represented Ghana in the first international Taekwondo Championship there in the Army Coach. Yeah, I, I understand that. But what Three. made you, what, what, what informed you in that? What made you take? Or partake in the martial art. I mean, oh, okay. I used, to watch, I used to watch lots of movies, martial art, Chinese movies, and okay. stuff. And then uh, opera time. <laughs> uh, growing up in Ghana, so I got curious. One of my friends called Sammy Christian. He had a martial art academy. All right. And uh, it fancied me that uh, my mom got me a martial art uniform, and uh, you know, just like anything else, I just there was no one particular. I right. went in there. All right. And sooner or later, I became part of it. Okay. So is it uh, just a sport, or you just, uh, it's also for, for defense purposes, or is it? Well, we have come back to Taekwondo with martial arts form. We have uh, Olympic Taekwondo martial arts form. So it's for, we have, we have various categories. We have the sporting aspect. We have combat self-defense aspect. We have traditional training aspect. So which so one is yours? I am. A, I will, I'm a martial artist. I'm. I'm all of it. <laughs> um, we'll come back to black martial arts, and then Olympic martial arts. All right. Come back to when Olympic and Southern and then martial arts. Okay. I, I'm. I'm going to um, ask you where your location is in Canada. So if any of the viewers want to join your school, they can also contact you, and you can give your details out. But you are now part of an AFCA movement, which is uh, the Armed Forces Children Association. Um, what is actually your involvement with AFCA and the Soju Yaba movement? Why did you decide to join them? Uh, well, you know, I could see a lot of my father's friends uh, and my school An embodiment of that brings us and we attach to them. Uh, Alex, can you speak a bit louder for yeah. me? Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's an embodiment, a continuation embodiment of the finest officers that ever left, the children from the, one of the finest officers that ever left the Ghana Forces. Because who brought it to the beginning, who brought it to the Ghana Forces to where it is now? And then uh, I feel the spirit and the, um, the spirit. And the goals of the AFCO quite interesting and enticing for us to look out for each other and that and also to help other other people uh, who who probably are not as fortunate as us within the armed forces children and the armed forces community and the little contribution that we could do. So I I I, I do a lot of community work with my business here in Canada. Okay. So no, so nothing 
universal psychology and so to join that group and to sell is something that we do our, both, our parents taught us how to sell parents thought very well they were in the army giving they gave their life okay to defend the country at any time all right so it was one of the reasons during the uh the training. wonderful talking about business you are wh which part of canada are you are you actually based and your school located? I am. I've been here. I've been here since 1988. The last 32 years. I'm based about 25 minutes from Toronto, um, the Georgetown and Georgetown, Ontario, and Melton, Melton, Ontario. Okay. I've been uh, involved in the martial arts here for the last 30 years. Been self-employed in the martial arts business. Okay. For 28 years, and uh... all right. That's fine. If anybody wants to join your, your school, uh, give us a bit of, uh, is there a website they can go to um, or a contact number they can call? Yeah, you can go to Halton Halton Martial Arts. That's okay. But because of the COVID and stuff, I'm recreating everything. So Halton Martial Arts of CA. Uh, it's my old website. We have a new one under construction. We should be, we should be around not too long. It's also uh, so if you go to Halton Martial Arts, see it, it will link you up to our new website. In Halton Martial Arts. <clears throat> Wonderful, Felix. I think this is where time will bring us. I would like to say a big sure. thank you. I know I've just taken you out of your training session. To uh, no, that's okay. No, no, that's okay. I'm done today. <laughs> But yeah, I hope we catch again. We catch up again very soon. Perfect. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you thank take you, care of you. yourself and uh, stay safe. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, viewers, Bye. this is where time will bring us. I'd like to thank you all uh, for uh, having to join us and spending your quality time watching us all across the world. I'd like to thank my sponsors for supporting the show. I'd like to thank Andy's Natural Mineral Water. If you happen to be in Ghana and you want to quench your thirst, look for no water than Andy's Natural Mineral Water. If you're also looking for a land to buy in a very serene location in Accra, uh, there is wonderful location around Oyibi. Contact the estate agency that is on the screen and contact them for your land. It's affordable. And the good thing is they are making installment packages. So you can pay 50% down and then the 50% you pay it in the year. It's a genuine land and I'm sure most of us in the Western world are quite concerned about buying properties in Ghana. But this is one you shouldn't miss. Well, don't also forget to subscribe and uh, contact Sujaba if you are a member of an armed forces home and you've lost a parent and you need help. They are willing to support you, whichever way and need you require. I'd like to say thank you for watching. This is The Hour Show. Take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time, have a good day and goodbye.